Hello everyone, this is Jeremiah. In today's video, we'll be looking at the markerless laser scanning feature of the EinScan Rigil. We will compare this feature to the standard markered laser mode and infrared mode. All projects will be scanned at 0.2 millimeter resolution. The scans will be done on a 2018 Subaru Crosstrek Infotainment and Climate Control Center. You could see that I've started the markerless laser scan. The Rigil never had a single tracking issue, but X-Scan did crash during the first attempt. I have completed the scan, so now it's time to optimize and generate the point cloud. Now it's time to mesh the model. I'm going to select standard filter, standard smooth, and remove spikes. Meshing looks good, so I will confirm it. Here is a quick look at the scanned model. Uh, later after we do the other two scans, I will compare this in great detail. Here is the marker laser scan. I'm doing this in standalone mode on the Rigel. I'm using the screencast function to record this. Just note that it does impact FPS slightly. I'm starting the scan now. You'll see throughout this recording that the green laser lines are turning magenta sometimes. That just means it's losing tracking. I probably didn't have enough markers or I just didn't have them in the right locations, but it still worked. I am done with the scan, so I will acknowledge it. The point cloud data looks good here, so we'll go ahead and generate the mesh. I'll match the settings we used in the markerless laser scan, but I'll also enable texture mapping here. The mesh looks good, so we'll complete it. We're finished here, so we will complete this function to save it to the device. Here is the infrared scan. I'll just let you watch this video. It pretty much has a similar workflow to the laser mode. You'll see that we cannot mesh hair at 0.2 millimeters on device. I'll go ahead and switch to XScan, import the project, and mesh at 0.2 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the point cloud data a little bit here first, since we only care about the infotainment and climate control area. Then I will optimize and generate the point cloud data.
The point cloud data looks good here. I could turn the texture on and off. I'll go ahead and generate the mesh data. The mesh data looks good, so we will confirm it. Here is a quick look at the scan model. You'll see some areas are pretty noisy, and that's due to the plastic being reflective. It's possible that I could have changed some settings to improve this. This was just a quick scan. Here is the infotainment and climate control area that we actually scanned you can clearly see how reflective some of the plastic is. Now we come to the interesting part of the video. How do the scans actually compare? So I've taken all three scans and I've imported the STL files in the cloud compare and I line them up and they're represented here in different colors and we'll go over that. Uh, the first thing I did was deleted some of the extra data so I'll turn this off here. You can see here is the marker laser scan. We will consider this color not so cosmic orange. Here is the data I removed. And the markerless laser scanning. We're just going to call this color green. And this is the data that I removed. And then here's the infrared scan in purple. And you know we already cleaned that up a little bit in X scan. And I just cleaned it up a little bit more here so it, they overlay for easier alignment. Now that you've seen each scan, I will turn the three scans back on. Just so you can see real quick what it looks like. So how do these actually compare? Let's look at the data. And we will start with the markerless compared to the marker scan. Now what I've done here is I've used the scalar field tool to create a deviation heat map. So this map here has been set to plus or minus 0.3 millimeters. Keep in mind that we had XScan fill in all of the markers on the marker laser scan mode. So you're going to see some deviation here. I should have left marker fill off. Overall, I think a lot of this data lines up with plus or minus 0.15 millimeters. So I think this is, you know, pretty good for having no markers. Let's move over to the infrared now. So this is the infrared model and we're going to compare it to the marker laser scan. Here's the heat map. Uh, just to note that the scaling is different versus the markerless one. So this is set to plus or minus 0.75 millimeters. And obviously the scan isn't as nice, especially where there's reflective plastic. So you could just take a look at this for a moment. Just to note a bunch of this outside stuff here, sometimes the data might just be missing. Like from the reference scan here, you could see that that data is missing, so it's just going to be red. So I'll just ignore that. But I mean, overall, this is much worse than the markerless scan. For all of you pixel peepers out there, well, mesh peepers in this case, here is an overlay so we could get up close and personal with the scan quality. On the left is our marker laser scan so that's the reference and on the right is our markerless laser scan. I'll just move this manually and you can check it out. Marker versus markerless up close.
marker versus infrared. Marker versus infrared up close. So, what are my thoughts? While returning back to the marker versus markerless scan, uh, the marker mode is picking up more details, especially around this dash area here. You can see the bumps are more pronounced, and that's actually true of the actual dash. If we look around these rotary knobs here, we'll see there's silk screen, and you can see more of it in the marker side here. There might be a little bit of noise too. I mean, you could still see it sort of in the markerless side. It does look a bit cleaner, but I don't know if that's... It does look cleaner actually here, but I think you could still pick up a little bit more detail. If we look around these buttons here, the gap, I mean, they look pretty close. In general, the marker mode is always going to win, right? Because it has the markers for reference, which help greatly with the accuracy and drift. But in many instances, like the scan here, you could see that the markerless mode worked extremely well, and most of it only deviated within plus or minus 0 0.15 millimeters, which, I mean, you could do a lot of things. That accuracy is excellent. And obviously that depends on the object that you're scanning because you need enough features for the infrared tracking. Overall, this is an excellent feature and I'm surprised more people aren't talking about it. There seems to even be misconceptions that somehow the quality is worse than even infrared, and that just doesn't make any sense. I think this would be a game-changing feature if Shining 3D added the ability to use markers. That way we could scan objects that don't have many features and control potential drift. The good news for Rigil owners is that this markerless feature will be coming to standalone mode. This was stated in the FAQ about the Einscan Rigil on Einstar's website. I imagine that the Einstar rocket will have similar results with the marker-free laser scanning, since the scanning hardware is similar to the Rigil. Well, this concludes my video. Thanks for watching.